This video is part of a series where we build an entire FPV drone from start to finish. So if it feels like you're in the middle of a conversation that you missed the start of, that's why. If you're here for the information in this specific video, keep watching. But if you want to find out the full context for what's going on here, there's a link in the video description to the full playlist, and you might need to go back and start with video number one. In this video, we're going to be installing the analog video transmitter and camera in the quadcopter. And as a reminder, you, uh, you could watch this video, you can watch whatever video you want, but you're only going to actually follow the steps in this video if you are using the analog system. If you're using Walksnail or DJI 03, then there are subsequent videos in the playlist that will show you how to install them. And we're going to start with our video transmitter, which um, my video transmitter looks slightly different than yours. Yours has four little ears with mounting holes on the sides. And the reason mine doesn't have that is that those mounting holes are made for a 30 millimeter size mounting. So in theory, you could actually mount your video transmitter on top of your flight controller. The reason we're not gonna do that is because this frame doesn't have enough vertical space to fit anything above the flight controller in the ESC. Instead, we are gonna mount the video transmitter in the rear and so we're, ju we're just gonna, it doesn't have 30 millimeter mounting in the rear on this frame. So we're just going to stick this down with some double-sided tape. If you take a close look at your video transmitter, you'll see that those little mounting tabs are scored. There are score marks here and you can just take like a little pliers or something and you can just break them off, break them off very carefully. I had video showing you of me breaking them off, but then the, I had to reshoot this section of the video and the original footage is gone. So hopefully you can figure out how to do that. Just pop it off. And when you're done, you will have this. This is your video transmitter. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna solder some wires to it. So this one doesn't have a plug. Uh, unfortunately, it has wires. Now you will be provided in your kit some wire. You should have at least you should have eight actually. The four of them are gonna be used for the video transmitter and four are gonna be used for the receiver. So you should have these wires. They should be about 12 centimeters long and you will have a red, a black, a yellow, and I think you're gonna get a white, but I don't have any white wire here, so mine is gonna be blue. Don't, uh, don't get hung up on that. Now let's take a close look at the pads on this video transmitter and just get some background information about video transmitters. When you're looking at a video transmitter, it will always have a power and a ground pad. You, it'll need to get power and it'll need to have ground, otherwise it can't turn on. And in this case, that is marked ground and VBAT. And what VBAT is telling you is that it can take battery voltage in, which is a little bit vague because like, battery voltage could be 50 volts there the 50 volt batteries exist but this thing can't take more than 6s battery voltage if we really needed to know uh, then we could look at the specs sheet and we could hopefully find an actual number like 26 volts um, but what this is telling you is that it can take a typical battery voltage that you would expect to use on a quadcopter uh, and that's where that wire is going to go the next wire is labeled SA, and that stands for Smart Audio. Smart Audio is extremely confusingly named because it doesn't actually have anything to do with audio. It just is named that for historical reasons. And what Smart Audio is, is a protocol that lets the video transmitter talk to the flight controller. The reason the video transmitter needs to talk to the flight controller is that this video transmitter can be on one of several channels. Let's say that there are eight channels for the sake of this discussion. If two video transmitters are on the same channel, then then their signals will interfere and the pilots will get each other's video in the goggle. And obviously that would be bad if you were trying to fly your quad, but you were seeing somebody else's video, right? So pilots need to be able to change channels. They also need to be able to change output power. More output power means longer range, but also more interference if you're flying with other people. So for example, at races, when there will typically be six or eight people in the air at a time, everybody will turn their output power down. So you need to be able to change your output power and your channel in the field very easily. And if we look, we can see buttons here on the video transmitter that let you change your power and your channel. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to be like, Arr. what you want to do is in your goggles, you can actually bring up a menu in the goggles that lets you change your output power and your band. And that's great. But that all goes through the flight controller. In order for that to work, the flight controller has to be able to take the signals from your controller and tell the video transmitter, here's what they want us to do. 
And that's what the smart audio connection is for. Letting the video transmitter communicate with the flight controller so that you can change power and channel without ever actually picking up the quad and pressing a button. This video transmitter has an audio input. If you had an external microphone, you could wire it to this audio input and then you could have an earbud uh, on your goggles that would let you hear Mostly it just lets you hear the sound of the wind rushing by. Most people don't fly with a microphone, although some people feel like the ability to hear the motors with the microphone really helps. We will not be installing a microphone on this build though. If you do decide you want to install a microphone on your own, there is only one microphone you should think about getting. It is the Rush AGC microphone. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to buy one and you want to figure out how to wire it up, more power to you. The video pad is for the video input from whatever device, typically a camera, is sending video to the video transmitter. And then we have two additional ones, 5 volt out and an additional ground. And the idea behind these is that older cameras used to only be powered from 5 volts. So the video transmitter can take battery voltage, full battery voltage, but some older cameras could only be powered from five volts, so you couldn't connect them directly to the battery, they would fry. And the idea was that the video transmitter would have a five volt regulator that would provide power for the camera uh, in that situation. However, in our case, the camera is gonna get power from the five volt regulator on the flight controller because that keeps the wiring simpler, and so we are not gonna use those two pads. Not all video transmitters will have a separate five volt output, but this one does. When you're done, this is what you'll get. Uh, and I recommend you follow the color conventions that you see me using here. That ground is always black and red is always VBAT or power. Uh, it is very common to use yellow for a video wire. So I try to stick to that. And then for smart audio, there really isn't a convention. And I think you have a white wire and I have a blue one. Don't let that bother you. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to figure out how I'm gonna route these wires and cut them to length. And what I like to do is give them twists, give them a gentle twist. Don't over tension them so they pull on the solder joints and break off, but we'll just twist them to keep them neat. And then this is gonna go like so when we finally mount it. And these are gonna kinda come like this, perhaps. And where is it gonna go? It's gonna go somewhere on the flight controller. So I'm just gonna give myself just a little bit of extra slack here and cut these wires like right about here. Can always cut them shorter, can never cut them longer. The solder pads on the flight controller that are intended for the video transmitter are here at the top. Uh, and uh, let's talk about those for a second, uh, just to sort of give you some general background knowledge. This pad is labeled VTX, and that is the video output from the flight controller to the video transmitter. Now, uh, if you are really thinking about this, you might ask, why is the flight controller sending video to the video transmitter? Shouldn't the video come from the camera? Camera sees picture, sends video to video transmitter. Video transmitter transmits video to goggles, right? That makes sense. The flight controller is involved because the flight controller has a chip on board. It's actually this chip right here that draws the on-screen display or OSD. And the on-screen display gives you information in your goggles like battery voltage and so forth. Now with digital video transmitters, this works a little bit differently. And we'll talk about that when we get to those uh, videos. Uh, but with analog systems, the signal actually goes from the camera into the flight controller. It goes through this OSD chip and then out to the video transmitter so that the flight controller can draw the OSD. And that is why the video output comes from the flight controller to the video transmitter. The next wire is labeled SA and that is intended for smart audio. That makes sense. It's very convenient that it's labeled that. Or the smart audio pad is an example of something called a UART, U-A-R-T. It stands for a big long technical computer phrase that no one ever says out loud. So we'll just call it a UART. And you can think of a UART like kind of like a USB plug on a computer. It's something that a peripheral plugs into and talks digital ones and zeros and serial data. Smart audio is just one of many things that could be connected to a UART. In fact, when we get to the part where we solder up the receiver, the receiver is also gonna be soldered to a UART and the signals from the receiver will go in and out of the UART. Um, most flight controllers don't have a dedicated SA smart audio pad. Most flight controllers are going to just have you connect the smart audio wire to any available UART that you find convenient. So keep that in mind as you're doing other builds and you see flight controllers that don't have an SA pad. Just use any UART TX pad, transmit, TX for transmit. Next, we've got a pad labeled power. 
which again, the labeling on this flight controller is a little unconventional. Power, like what does that mean? It's the power for the video transmitter, but I only know that because I read the manual. I'd really prefer to see this labeled as a voltage, like 10 volts or nine volts or VBAT, so that I know what voltage is gonna come out of there and go to the flight controller. But that is where we're gonna put the power wire for the VTX. And then we've got ground. And those four pads are where we're gonna solder our VTX. When you're done, your wiring should look something like this. Notice that I've soldered these wires coming back across the flight controller uh, because that's where the video transmitter is gonna be. A lot of times people will solder them coming out this way, but then they have to kind of make a U-turn to come back and that can create stress that can uh, sort of cause the joint to break or the wire to break. We're gonna give this uh, some loose twists just to take the slack out and keep it neat. And then we are gonna get some double-sided tape. Now, uh, you will be provided in the kit with a small piece of double-sided tape for mounting the video transmitter. The bill of materials says foam tape. So it's possible you will have a more sort of thick foamy tape, kind of like this. The stuff that I am using is Scotch Extreme Mounting Tape. And it's a little sort of thinner, kind of rubbery piece. Just use whatever you've got. Now, it is very important that when you put that tape on that that tape covers these pads because if the red and the black wires make contact with the carbon, then uh, you could short circuit to the frame and that would be bad. The really responsible thing to do here would be to put some heat shrink on this, but I'm not convinced that we have any heat shrink that's the right size to go on this. Another thing you can use is this stuff is called Kapton tape, K-A-P-T-O-N. You can buy it off the internet and you could wrap your electronics in it kind of keep it in place. But that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna use what we got, which is the double-sided tape. We will be fine as long as the double-sided tape keeps the red and the black wires from contacting the carbon. We're gonna just set that down. Try to push that up forward a little bit just to make sure that it's out of the way. And we're gonna give it a little push and a wiggle and that'll lock that in. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug the antenna into the video transmitter. And I wanna give you a warning here, never power up an analog video transmitter with the antenna uninstalled. Whether the antenna is popped out of this connector here or whether it's unscrewed or whether it's just broken and like the wire is busted or something. Ne if, if an analog video transmitter powers up with the antenna missing, the video transmitter is likely to be permanently damaged. Sometimes that happens in 30 seconds. Sometimes it happens in five seconds. It's, there's no way to really know. But if you power, if you notice like, oh, my range is really bad. My video transmitter seems really weak. And then you remember that you powered it up with no antenna. That's why. So don't do that. If you bought the analog version of this kit, you will have gotten this 3D print. It is a mounting bracket for your antenna. Uh, please forgive the print quality. I printed these at home and I'm sure the one that you are gonna get is gonna look way, way better than this. Um, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little connector here. Um, this one is called an MMCX connector and this is called an SMA connector. And uh, we're just gonna stuff that in to the bracket. I'm gonna stick that through. And then you should have received this little bag with some screws in it and some nuts, but I don't actually think we even need the nuts because I think that these holes on this uh, brass SMA connector are threaded and these screws will just go straight into them. So that's gonna go through this hole in the bracket and then it's gonna screw into the brass. When you're done, this is approximately how it will look with the screws going through the antenna mount and screwing into the brass of the SMA connector. It's possible that at some point in the future, the SMA connector you receive will not have screw holes, but will be smooth and the screws will just pass through and you'll need to put a nut on the backside to hold it in place. Hopefully not though. I really prefer the tapped ones and I hope they stick with it. Next, we're gonna plug this MMCX connector into the MMCX connector on the video transmitter. We do that by just kind of lining it up and it just pops in and once it's in, it should be secure. If you need to take it out, it's important to not to like pry it sort of sideways and don't pull on it by the cable because the cable is somewhat fragile and can be damaged. The best way to take it out if you need to do that is to grab it by the base and kind of pull on it like that and it should pop straight out. You can even 
like use like a little tool like this if you're very, very gentle. And again, when I push it in, I'm pushing on the base. I'm not pushing on the wire. Just give it a wiggle until I feel it go in. There we go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the computer and we're going to set up the flight controller so that it can talk to the video transmitter. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to power the video transmitter up. So I am going to install this antenna. This is the antenna. I'm going to install that by screwing it into the SMA connector. And the way to know if you've done it right is to kind of twist the antenna like this. And if the antenna can twist, then it is not quite tight enough. I actually like to take this little eight millimeter wrench and if you use an eight millimeter wrench to tighten an SMA connector, be aware that it's brass and it's soft metal and you can over tighten it. But I just like to take it and very carefully snug it down until the antenna is friction fit and doesn't want to rotate it. There we go. So now if I try and rotate the antenna, nothing happens. That is tight enough. I could do just a little more and now we're good. Now that our video transmitter is wired to the flight controller, we need to tell the flight controller the information it needs to be able to talk to the video transmitter. There are many different kinds of video transmitter that the flight controller could be talking to, so simply connecting them together isn't sufficient. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to use Beta Flight Configurator. This is the app that we use to configure our flight controller. If you've never downloaded and installed Beta Flight Configurator before, I've got a video about how to do that, and I'm going to link it in the video description below. Below. But this is going to be one of those things that is perfectly encapsulated and explained in a separate video and you may have already done it, so we're not going to go over it here. If you need to, pause the video, go ahead and get Betaflight Configurator installed, get your drivers sorted out if you need to do that, and I'll see you back here when that's done. I'm going to plug USB into the flight controller and I want you to look here in the upper right uh, where we should see a new serial port appear. Ah, here it is. COM3, whatever appears there is the flight controller that you just plugged in. With that selected, we're gonna hit connect. Now we're gonna get some warnings and I don't want you to worry about those warnings. We're just gonna focus on setting up the video transmitter at this time. And the first thing we need to do is go to the ports tab over here on the left and we need to tell Betaflight which UART our video transmitter is connected on. Uh, and uh, if we had a more standard labeling of the flight controller, if that smart audio wire was labeled TX1 or TX3, we would know what UART number it was. That's how most flight controllers are gonna do it, and it's whatever number comes after that TX. But in this case, it's just labeled SA smart audio, and that doesn't really tell us which of these UART numbers uh, is the one that the uh, video transmitter is connected to. So we go to the product page for the flight controller and we look for a user manual or some kind of documentation. And sure enough, here it is, Xylus Stacks V2 manual. And if I scroll down, I've got this tab here. Aha, Smart Audio VTX is on TX5, okay? So that is TX5, that's UART number five. Here in the ports tab, where we see UART5, we're going to go across that row to where it says peripherals, and we're going to change the peripheral to VTX TBS Smart Audio, and we'll hit save and reboot. There's one more piece of information we need to put into the flight controller so that it knows how to talk to the video transmitter, and that is referred to as a VTX table. And the short version of this is that for every video transmitter, you need to find the VTX table and load it. And uh, in some cases, the VTX table that you want will be here in the Betaflight presets tab. If we go to presets and we look for just VTX presets, we can see here are some uh, VTX tables for some common video transmitters. But if I search for stacks, we don't find the Xylo stacks of VTX in this preset. I just wanna show you this in case in the future you're using a more common video transmitter that's where you can get the VTX table from. Instead, we're gonna to go to the product page for the video transmitter, and we're going to cross our fingers that the manufacturer has provided it for us, and sure enough, here we go. Download the Betaflight VTX table for Smart Audio 2.1 integration here. I, that's probably what we need, and we've got this thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to Control A to select all, and right click copy this stuff, then I'm going to go to the Betaflight Video Transmitter tab, and I'm going to choose Load from Clipboard. 
And when I do that, my screen should change to look like you see here. This is the important part, the stuff you see here. And we're gonna hit save. And then what we can do is we can power up our video transmitter with a battery. Make sure that your antenna is connected or you will destroy your video transmitter. Here we go. When you do that, you should see the LEDs on the video transmitter light up and start blinking. And if we click away from this tab and then come back, we should see device ready, yes. That tells you that the flight controller is talking to the video transmitter. And what we can try to do is we can choose a race band. Um, I'm gonna suggest that you always use race band because that's what most people are using today and it'll allow the channels that you're on to be consistent with the channels that they're on. And we can just choose a channel from one to eight my, my preference is to use race band eight because that avoids all interference from Wi-Fi devices that might be nearby. If you're somewhere where you know there's no Wi-Fi, you can use any of these. Uh, and the most important thing is just to use a channel that nobody else is using who is flying with you. So we'll choose race band eight and we'll set the power to, let's set it to 25 milliwatts so it doesn't overheat while we're working on it here on the bench and we'll hit save. And when we do that, we should see those options update over here, there we go, we just saw them come in over here on the right. So the flight controller is talking to the video transmitter, that's good. The last step is gonna to be to wire up the camera. So uh, take the camera out and take out this little joystick. And I want you to save this joystick because fewer and fewer cameras come with this joystick in fact, by the time you're seeing this, perhaps the camera you're getting will not even come with this joystick. Oh, if it does come with the joystick, protect it like a precious heirloom because what that joystick is good for is, let's see, we take out this little green and black wire here. This green and black wire plugs into the joystick. And you can just leave that plugged in there. And then on the back of the camera, there are two plugs. This plug is gonna be for the power and the video, and this little plug here is for the joystick. Now, you don't leave the joystick plugged in. If you really want to, you can leave the green and black wire plugged in, and you can unplug the joystick and kind of tuck that green and black wire away somewhere while you're flying. But what this joystick is used for is adjusting the camera settings, things like brightness and contrast. And some people really think you can get a better image out of the camera if you tweak that. Without the joystick, you can't adjust those settings and there are some times when you really need to. So hang on to that joystick. But what we're gonna concern ourselves with right now is this wire harness with a red, a black, and a yellow wire. And that is gonna plug into the camera Make sure you plug it in the right way up. It should only want to go in one way, but you could obviously force it, so don't do that. And this is gonna go in the front of the quadcopter roughly here, and it's gonna solder to these pads roughly here. So give yourself some slack and cut those wires to approximately the right length. You can cut that basically in half, more or less. Yep and we are gonna solder that down. Now the three wires coming out of the camera are power, ground, and video. And some cameras will have marked right here what their input voltage range is. Others may have a sheet of paper in the box that has the specs for the camera. Uh, this camera is going to be wired to this power pad right here, which outputs a voltage that the camera is capable of taking. I, I don't actually 100% know off the top of my head what that voltage is but I know it's okay because I've researched this before. Basically, you just need to know while looking at the flight controller's voltage output that it is within the acceptable range for the device. It will look at the user manual for the device or maybe the device has the voltage range marked on it. It'll say something like seven to 24 volts. And as long as the voltage that it's getting is in that range, then everything is fine. So we'll put our multimeter into DC volts mode and just test. What voltage is here? Oh, it's 10 volts, 10 volts. Okay, so the flight controller has a 10 volt regulator that's gonna power the camera and the VTX. Great, so we've got ground and we've got power. The next one is labeled cam, and that's gonna be the video input from the camera to the flight controller. Sometimes that would be labeled VI for video in, and the video transmitter would be labeled VO for v video out. It's not uh, completely consistent. And then the last pad is CC, which stands for camera control. And we are not gonna be using CC. The camera control pad 
emulates this joystick. Remember I said some cameras don't come with this joystick? Then how do you adjust the camera settings if that was something you wanted to do? Some flight controllers have the ability to emulate this joystick. If you wanted to try to take advantage of this, you would remove the ground wire and you would solder the green wire to the CC, camera control pad. If you're dying to know about that, I have a video I put out. I'll link it in the video description before, but frankly, it's the kind of thing that seems really cool, but is kind of a hassle and you seldom need it. And also it doesn't actually work that reliably. So on some cameras, it just doesn't work at all. So I've kind of gotten away from doing that and I just use the dang joystick. Here's how the camera wire should solder to the flight controller. Uh, and I want you to notice that in this case, the camera is out the front. So I've soldered the wires going that way. So again, they don't have to make any little U-turn or whatever. And I'm just gonna gently twist that to take up the slack and keep things neat. And at this point, if we were to plug in a battery and get our goggles, we should see video we should see an image coming from this camera. So let's totally do that. If my memory's correct, I set the video transmitter to channel race band two. So let's just put the goggles on race band two and haha, yes, we have video, yay, it's working. Next, I want you to get the two camera plates and I wanna show you how to mount the camera in the camera plates. And you should see that the camera plates for the JB QAVS have several different choices of where you're gonna mount your camera. And the reason for that is that the dimensions of different cameras are different. And so you need the ability to kind of move the camera forward, back up and down to get it exactly where you want it. The camera has two screw holes, one in each side, that are gonna be used for mounting. Some cameras have two screw holes, one above the other, but this one only has one screw hole. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to place the camera so that the camera is protected by the metal cage. So you can see if the camera were to stick out too far, it would be likely to get smacked in an impact and break. And if the camera is too far back behind the metal cage, we will actually see the metal cage and it'll obstruct our view. So we ideally want the camera to be just flush or just a little behind the metal cage. And you can see if I line up the screw hole with the front hole, now it sticks out. If I line it up here with the rear hole though, that kinda is perfect. And so I think that's gonna be the one that we use. Now the camera comes with this hardware. We're gonna get the very, very small screw. In fact, wait, there's an even smaller one. Yes, this is the one we want, the very smallest screw. And I believe it's a 1.5 millimeter driver that that's gonna go with. I also want you to note the way this camera plate is. The up side, the top of the camera plate swooshes back just a little, okay? So this is the bottom, this is the top, and then look at the way these holes are oriented with this little uh, angular one here on bottom. Make sure you've got it the right way up. And then the other thing is that this part here is on the inside, and this sort of recessed part is on the outside. For the camera, the top of the camera is where the plugs come out. So we're gonna orient the camera with the top side up, we're gonna orient the side plate with the top side up, and, or, we're going to install that like so. And likewise on the other side, we're gonna end up something like this. And these two tabs on the bottom of the camera plates are gonna go into these two slots on the front of the quadcopter. On mine at least, it's a fairly tight fit. It's fairly snug and kinda of gotta wiggle them in there. And then once they're in, they kinda of don't wanna come out. I guess that's a good thing. And then on the underside of the frame, there are two M3 holes and there will be two little short M3 screws that look something like this that will go in there. You can go ahead and install those. And here's where we're at as we come to the end of this video. We've got the video transmitter installed on double-sided tape. We've got the MMCX to SMA wire mounted on the antenna bracket. We've got the antenna installed. We've got the camera installed and the camera and the video transmitter are wired to the flight controller and the flight controller is configured to be able to remote control the video transmitter. That is gonna bring us to the end of this video. 
head on down to the playlist in the video description or the card that's on screen if you can see the card for the next video in the series. Actually, the next video in the series is gonna be either the walk snail or the O3 video transmitter. Feel free to watch those if you're interested, but if you just installed the analog one, you could probably skip those. See you there.